So I did consider uh, doing some things to proactively uh, maybe stop the hair loss, uh, where I did look into possible medications, um, maybe some Rogaine. Uh, I considered it, but I actually didn't follow through with it as much. Um, I know when I was younger, the options were a lot less. Uh, so I, I think at that point, I just decided, hey, um, this is something I can't avoid. Um, I'm just not gonna be able to do anything about it. So we got a chance to visit with my patient Adam, Adam Lemke, and uh, he's been an interesting journey. I started with him a little close to a year ago. And at first they said, well look, unfortunately there's nothing we can do. You know, it's unethical to go ahead and operate on, on that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you know, people might tell you um, you can get that operated on still, don't do it. Um, which is one thing I did appreciate as well about Dr. McGrath, the open and the honesty. He started off as a completely bald guy, uh, class seven, someone who would come in and normally I would say to him, I've got nothing for you. And really I, I quite by accident stumbled into an even greater level of efficacy with these exosomes on this individual. So of course we started off with him just treating him with two cc's of the exosomes and he had a profound amount of regrowth of hair in the frontal forelock. Well, that's never been seen before. So that got all of our attention. They said, well hey, we have some exosome therapy. It's been doing really great stuff. We haven't tried it on somebody that's got a complete hair loss on the top like you. Um, now what we could do with this is we could actually try to see if we can get some growth Maybe it will speed up the donor hair process, maybe give you a little bit of extra hair as well, uh, and then later we might be able to do that surgery, you know, and, and there might be a higher probability. Um, so we went ahead and started the therapy at that time. Um, fast forward a few months, because after we did that treatment, we went ahead and treated his whole scalp, and we did about 10 cc's of the exosomes in the hope that maybe I could regrow all of this hair. We wanted to push the envelope and see what we could get. Well, he got improvement. He certainly got more density in that frontal forelock, um, but we didn't get like a, a total regrowth of hair in a scalp. So I thought, okay, well, I mean, that, that's not necessarily shocking. However, it actually increased the donor area. Um, and that change happened within uh, about a month and a half of the last injection I got. He had a complete change in the quality and the density of all of his donor hair. When he first arrived to me early back in July, way back when, he was not a candidate in any way, shape, or form. He had baby fine wispy hair on the back of his head. After the use of the 10 cc's of the exosomes, as it was, of course, making its way down, of course it's going to wash out and in that process, that washout period, it affected his donor hair so significantly that now when I put his side-by-side -side photos up, his donor hair is as good as any donor hair that's out there. So interestingly enough, what this has done is shifted the entire conversation with him because whereas before I had nothing to offer him, now I can legitimately speak to him about a successful transplant where maybe we can restore the frontal portion of his hair, uh, give him a nice hairline, and do something to really make a cosmetic impact. It's a very powerful tool. We're seeing amazing things with it, and uh, I think it really is going to help to continue to metamorphosize what we see and what we do in this industry.